Hello and welcome to our broadcast. If you are listening to this, I don't think you've stumbled on this by accident, but I believe that you're hearing this for a reason. I know you probably have a little bit of time. You maybe just happen to be scrolling through it late at night or you're listening to this on an audio podcast. Somehow you found found our broadcast. But listen, I want to share some things with you today that talk about the armor of God. And if you've been a believer for any amount of time, you probably know most everything about. You've heard sermon after sermon, heard everything about the armor of God, putting on the armor of God, how that we wear it. It's a breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, the sword of the spirit. You, you've heard all of these things, but I want to encourage you today to use these and put these on like the Apostle Paul said. You may have the armor of God because it belongs to you, but are you actively using them? Are you using what God gave you to stand against the enemy or are you getting beat up on a daily basis or, or in, in uh, daily life and you feel like you have no, no help or no hope? Well, you do have help. God has given you his word, but his word will not work if it's not activated. How do you activate God's word? You activate it by declaring it, speaking it out of your mouth. When you say it out of your mouth and you believe in your heart, you're speaking the word of God out into the existence. God, the word says, the Bible declares that God's word will not return void when it is sent forth, when a declaration is made, when, when God created the worlds, what did he do? He said and he spoke and those words went out into the universe and did and accomplished what he said for them to do. Just like a king doesn't physically a king doesn't physically go out and, and fight a battle or a king doesn't physically go out and, and, and make people do anything, but he gives an order. He gives an instruction. He gives a command and someone carries it out. Well, when we give an order, we give an instruction or we declare God's word, it's an order or a command going out. And this universe, everything in it, the angels of God, the demons, if there are, if there are demons that are attacking you and you declare God's word over them, you Take that sword of the Spirit and no, you're not physically swiping or cutting a demon, but in the, in this, the spiritual, in the, the power of the Spirit, that word goes forth as if it was a real sword that you were in, in a physical battle. And it is more real than this world. It's not a physical sword you're holding in your hand, but it is a it is a it is literally a sword coming out of your mouth because it does change and affect the supernatural world. It changes and affects when the enemy is fighting against you. If there is a if you're being oppressed by a devil, if you've had you have fear or torment or the anxiety, all of these things that are working on you, well, that is not the spirit of God. That is a, the spirit of Satan or spirit, evil spirits. That is spirits that have been sent out in this world. There are, just as there are angels, there are demons. And if you are not talking to them, I guarantee you, you don't, they're talking to you, so you better talk to them. They're whispering in your ear. They're whispering and in, in trying to get you to, to believe a lie. They're whispering to try to get you to act on something that, that is not from the Lord. It's not, not something from you, even something that you would want. But when you get into a moment of, of the flesh or anger or whatever, and words come out of your mouth, you know, many times you say things out of your mouth and you say, where did that come from? I can't believe I said that. Well, you heard a, some, something, uh, a, an evil spirit whispered in your ear. And you say, oh, you believe that there's a devil behind every bush? No. I believe that the devil's working like two devils behind every bush because he's working to try to destroy the kingdom of God, trying to destroy people's lives. And when he whispers something, if we don't take the armor of God to defeat him, the armor, the armor, what God has given us, he's given us tools, weapons, armor to protect, weapons to defend He's given us these things so that we can be victorious. Not for you to fail, not for you to be in defeat, but for you to overcome in every situation. Yes, in every situation. 
And you say, yeah, but what does that mean? Nothing bad ever happens? No, bad happens all over the world. But in every situation, even in the bad situations, God will cause us to come out of that or to come up higher or to be victorious even through a bad situation. If a bad situation, it's like the old saying that you know, you're not out un un unless you quit. You don't, you don't lose or the, unless you quit or unless you give up. Well, when a bad situation comes and you stop, when you give up, when you quit, when you turn the other way, when you turn on God, when you turn your back on Him because something happened that you know shouldn't have happened, and you say, well, God, why did you let this happen? And God's saying, why didn't you stand up? And why didn't you use my word? Why didn't you fight? Why didn't you declare? Why weren't you using what I gave you to stand against the enemy? You know, God is not just smacking the devil out of your life going, oop, like flies going, boop, boop. Oh, no, stay away from this. Stay away from them. These are my children. These are my children. No, he's not a big giant fly swatter keeping them off of you or, or some bug zapper. No, God has given us, and we are the ones that are called the warriors. We are the ones that are fighting the battle. He's, but he's given us the, everything that we need to overcome and to fight the enemy, everything that we need to win. He's given us the armor of God to stand against the devil. And I'm going to read this here in, in just a second. But in James, he says, you know the, the scripture in James 4, 7, that if you submit yourself to God, resist or stand against the devil, he must flee. He will not stay. If you resist what the devil is, is tempting you with or the devil is trying to oppress you with or put on you, you resist it and it can't stay. It doesn't have the right to stay. The only thing he can do is get you to accept, to take it, to, to allow him to overtake you. And to, t and to give in to every thought and every imagination, every evil m imagination, get you to take or to bite on what he's selling. The devil is a liar. If you submit to God, James 4, 7, resist the devil. Now, what is submitting? Submitting is humbling yourself. Well, right before that, most people don't read verse the, the sixth verse, but right before that, it says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Or he gives him the ability or the power to overcome. Grace is that ability and the power to overcome in every situation. It's God's ability, his super on our natural. God gives us that grace to overcome in every situation. So when the enemy comes, submitting yourself to God is not being so proud that you're handling this yourself or that you're going to take care of business. You know, some people, if, you, if somebody does something to you, you know, you're going to you're going to take revenge. You're going to get them back. You're going to, I'm going to take care of this. You know, the, the world's way is, is talking smack or, or talking, uh, people probably don't even say that anymore. I don't, I don't know if they, but the world's way is to, you know, be thug about it. I'm going to, I'm going to take care of it. You know, you're going to, you're going to be like the mafia. You, you, you mess with me. You mess with my whole family. I'm going to go take care of this myself. I've got what it takes to do this. I got everybody. I got my whole neighborhood. I got anybody. I'll take everybody with me. Whatever it takes. I'll build an army. I'll take care of it. You know what? What you're you're going after people because they said something to you or they did something. The world's way is to say you you touch me, I'm gonna hit you back even harder. Well, then what does that what does that do? Somebody else comes out against us and they they retaliate back. We our weapons are not to fight against people. Our weapons are to fight against the enemy that is working through people. Yes, people have a choice. People have a decision. Do people do wrong things? Absolutely. Do people allow themselves to, to fall into sin and temptation and, and offend us? Absolutely. They distrust. They break our trust. They do things against us. They talk about us. Yes, yes, yes. They All of these things. But where is it stemming from? It's an attack from the devil. The devil can't do something to you himself, but he can get to you through somebody you love. If someone you love says something hurtful to you, that's worse than, than him getting a whole group of people or a whole bunch of strangers talking about you because you don't care what they think. But someone you care about, someone you trust, if he can get them to say something about you or degrade you or uh, offend you or say something that, that hurts your feelings, 
that is how he is going to get in and then start a seed of offense, get you to become ungrateful, get you to look at God and say, why is this happening? And then you start falling apart. You start doing things outside of the word of God and you're not following his word. You're fighting the battle in the natural, not coming against the enemy with what God has given you. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, uh, Paul says a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Evil spirits are working, the fallen angels and the, all of the, the evil spirits that are working against the kingdom of God, trying to lure, trip, cause us to stumble, cause us to fall. You know, many people say, well, you know, I, I, I fell, I messed up, I, I, I've blown it, and now it's over. They want, they, you know, we all fall into temptation. We all mess up. We all fail. The devil wants you to look at your failures, failures, and, and then take on the mindset that that's how God sees you. God is not looking at your failures. God is looking at, yes, I see that you've fallen, but are you going to get up? I know you fell. I know you messed up, but are you, what are you going to do about it? He doesn't care that you fell. What he cares about is, what are you going to do from this? Are you going to get up and are you going to recognize how the enemy tripped you or how the enemy lured you or tempted you and yes, you gave in? Are you going to recognize that and get up and fight the enemy? That's what God's wanting you to do. He's not, he doesn't care that you messed up. He knows we all fail and mess up. God is not looking to, to slam us or to punish us or, 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 uh, condemn us for our failures. What he's wants us to, what he's wanting is for us to get up and realize and recognize that, yeah, the enemy kicked my butt. I gave in. I messed up. I, I've failed at this. Now I'm going to take care of business by getting up and doing the right thing, apologizing, getting up and making amends, getting up and, and realizing where the enemy came in at. And the next time he comes, then I kick his butt. Then I take authority. Then I stand against the enemy. Then I show the devil that I'm not a quitter. You're not going to back me up in a corner and then me crumble like a house of cards. I'm going to fight you and stand against you. And when the devil sees that you're not willing to back up, he moves on to somebody else because he is a weakling. He has no authority, no power. He is barking at the wind. The devil has no authority over you. God has given you authority over the enemy. He's given you authority over every spirit of darkness, whatever fear, whatever tactic, whatever addiction, whether it's lust, whether it's greed, whether it's jealousy, whether it's an addiction to a, a substance, God has given you authority to take authority over the enemy's tactics, over the enemy himself when he comes at you. And here's the word of God putting on that whole armor, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, after the battle, you'll be standing firm. But then what happens after, after the battle? Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, body, the body armor of God's righteousness, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith, stop the fiery arrows of the devil, and put on salvation as your helmet. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. That shield of faith, holding up that shield of faith, when the, when the, what is a fiery dart? The Bible talks about in Proverbs that fiery darts, darts or words are set on fire from hell. James talks about that, that the, the tongue is set on fire from hell and it, and it, it, it will guide or guard or guide, not guard, but guide your whole life like a ship, like a rudder on a ship. That tongue, who can tame the tongue? James talks about like a, like a bit in a horse's mouth. 
that you have to you have to take a hold of it and tame it by what? You can't do it naturally. You got to do it by the Spirit of God. But all of these things, what the enemy uses words to hit you like a fiery dart. And what happens with fire? It starts out very small, but if it's not put out, it will consume whatever it's attached to. So the enemy throws a fiery dart, but that's why we have the shield of faith. Faith, not faith. <laughs> the shield of faith to quench, to put out, to pour the water of the Holy Spirit over that. So if, it, if you've been hit with something and it feels like a wound, it feels like I've been, I've been hurt and I've been wounded, the devil wants to use that hurt and that wound to try to get you to lose your victory, lose your joy, lose your peace. But the peace and the washing of the water of the Word, the power of the Holy Spirit will wash over that wound, that hurt, that fire that's been kindling or built on the inside of you by a hurt word and wash it out, put it out, and then the healing anointing flow to heal that wound. But that's why we use the, the shield of faith to stop those fiery darts before they get have any effect on us. Then we have the helmet of salvation, that helmet of salvation that guard our mind when the enemy comes to you and says, you're not a believer, you're not a Christian. If you were saved, you wouldn't do this. If you were saved, you wouldn't act like that. If you were really, truly, if you really love the Lord or all these things he whispers to you because he's pointing out your sin or your failure and when you mess up or you sin, then the devil comes at you and tries to tell you that you're not even saved. That helmet of salvation guards. Why is it a helmet of salvation over your head, a helmet over your mind? Because that's where the enemy comes at you in the thought life. He comes at you in your mind to try to get you to believe a lie. And if you believe you're not saved, guess what? You're going to start acting like you're not saved. If he can get you to believe that you have no right to the kingdom of God, God doesn't love you, and you're not even saved anymore, then you're going to say, what's the use? You're going to go on in life, and you're not going to follow the Lord. So the helmet of salvation is going to guard your mind, guard your mind to the point that you with with that completeness or knowing that I am saved and the devil you can't take my salvation away I am sealed in the in the grace of God by the Holy Spirit he's got me and I'm not leaving him and the only way that I can ever not be saved is if I reject if I reject the price that was paid if I reject the way of salvation and that's Jesus Christ and if I don't, I'm not rejecting him. So devil, get out. You got to put down those thoughts with a shield of faith, declaring over your over who you are, that you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. You get back up and you keep running. So putting on that helmet of salvation, then the sword of the spirit, declaring out of your mouth what God's word says, not what the world says. But when the enemy comes at you, you declare, the Bible declares that if anyone confesses with their mouth, believes in their heart, that God, that Jesus died on the cross for me, God raised him from the dead, they shall be saved. So devil, you're a liar. You're defeating him with the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. You take authority over the enemy in your life. You use God's word. Find out what God's word says about you. And then you say that. You declare that. Don't repeat what you some awful, uh, twisted, darkened thought in your mind. Don't repeat those. Don't repeat negative or, or defeat. Don't repeat that I'm, you know, I'm horrible. I'm a horrible person. I'm ugly. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm worthless. All of these lies. Don't repeat them out of your mouth. Don't give validity to them. Let the word of God be what comes out of your mouth. Let God's word be what you declare, what you say about you, that I'm the apple of his eye, that God loves me. You know, I, a lot of times we'll, we'll say, and that and I will, you know, say that, you know, I'm his favorite. Well, God doesn't have favorites, but you know what? I'm going to say I'm his favorite because I am his favorite and you're his favorite, but that's still true. I'm his favorite. God loves me. I'm the apple of his eye. He thinks about me all the time. How can God think about you and 8 billion people all around the planet? Because he's God and he's able to. 
He thinks about me all the time. He's always for me. He's always looking for my best interest. He thinks he can't wait for me to talk to him. He can't wait for to see what I'm doing next. He loves to see what his children are doing. God's always looking. The Bible says that the, the eyes of the Lord search to and fro to find a heart that's set upon him. He's always looking, always searching for that person that is calling out to him, crying out and getting someone to reach them. Through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have the armor of God to stand against the tactics of the enemy, to not quit, to not back up, and to not give up. So if you'll take these things and, and get into God's word and begin to let the Holy Spirit show you, bring revelation to your life. Bring revelation to and make the word of God come alive on the inside of you. The word of God is powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It will divide and conquer. It is dividing soul and spirit. It will bring out the truth. It is the only thing that can reveal what the absolute truth is, what truth is, not what everybody says their truth is or this is truth for you. No, there is a truth, but the Word of God is what will reveal it when it's used, when it's developed, when it's when it's. Uh, spoken into existence and when it's declared and by faith when you get into the word of god when you let the holy spirit reveal the hidden secrets of the kingdom you to you these truths will come alive on the inside of you and they'll become part of you and then you'll be stronger and stronger and stronger living and acting on god's word amen god's word will stand forever it hasn't changed they can say that it's it's old it's outdated they're a liar it doesn't change. It's still operating today. It's still in effect today. It is what holds our world together. The word of God, the power, the word of his power, the word of his power, the word is what is his power is the word. It's the glue that holds our universe together. It's still doing it. He spoke it into existence, set the sun and the stars, and it's still operating today. So God's word doesn't fail. So let's trust this over what somebody else says or what we hear whispered in our ear or some thought that comes out of nowhere. And you go, wow, I never thought of that. I don't know why I'm thinking this. Well, I do because the devil's trying to get you to bite on it. So put down these thoughts, put down these things, trust the word of God, but know it, get into it, learn it, and let the Lord lead you and guide you into truth, love, joy, and peace because these are the things that are victorious. Amen. Let me end this in prayer. Father, we thank you today, Lord God, for revealing your word. Lord, helping us to take a hold of what you've already given us and use the gifts and the weapons, the, the gifts of, of um, on the inside of us. But Lord, the weapons that you've given us, the armor that you've given us to, to defend us and to defend those around us. Lord, we thank you in the name that's above every name, Lord, that you help us to take hold of your word not let go, not quit, and not turn the other way. But Lord, we thank you for victory in the name that is above every name, that you bring us out of whatever situation. Lord, there are people that are going through tough things right now. They are going through a, a time that they feel like they, could, they can't live any longer under this pressure. But Father, I thank you that you relieve that pressure in Jesus' name. You cause, Lord God, you cause that darkness to flee from them to the one that's crying out to you and says, I, Lord, I want to put on the armor, but I don't know how or I, I, don't, I can't even wear it. Father, I thank you that you swoop in there by the Holy Spirit and break that darkness off of them. Lord, that they stand up and they see that, Lord, you are the light, you are the truth, and you are the way. Father, we thank you in the name that is above every name for victory in their life. Lord, for those that, are, that think that they can't go on tomorrow, that today is it. Lord, I thank you for strengthening them in the name of Jesus, giving them the peace of the Holy Spirit and assuring them, God, that you love them, you care about them, and you see them right where they are. We thank you, Lord, in the name that's above every name, the precious name of Jesus. Amen.